much help. How's everybody doing today? I am excited to be on here. We are going to start and we are going to talk about selling more pressure washing jobs, but not so much that I, I am going to hit on it, but I am going to talk more about how to sell, how to close stuff. I see so many people um, that, you know, they, 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 I had an experience this week, and this is why this is what I'm going to hit on my story that I had an experience this week, and I had this realization of why people can't sell. Why, why, why can't people close jobs? Why is it so hard to close jobs? And I'm going to hit some of these basic things. I'm not going to go crazy on this. It's just some basic things that I am going to hit on. And yes, I'm on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, give me a hot shout out. Um, give me something there, but we're going to talk about this and we're going to hit on this pretty hard. I, I've actually had two experiences this week that I'm going to bring up on my personal self of how you can, what they could have done to make my experience so much better. And this is what I see why, how people struggle. This is why I pe see people struggle. If you struggle selling jobs, just put put something in the comments of what are some things that you may think that people struggle selling jobs. Um, yes, I am wearing pink. My, uh, my daughters got me this shirt. I got two of them and that is what I do. So, um, but before we get moving on here, we're going to start seeing, we'll see who all we got in here. We got Mrs. Hoover in the house. Um, excited to be here. Um, George put it's slow week. We got Tony Witt from Southwest Florida. Um, tell me why we should join your membership on King of Pressure Washing. Because I have a blueprint of what you need to be able to start and have a successful pressure washing business. I walk through and I help you how to start. I show you how I did mine and I show you how you can start and grow your business. Not only that, it's an amazing community. We have a couple, we get 40, 50 people come on the Zoom calls every week on Monday night to learn together and to network together and to grow together. And if you are in the membership and you're in here tonight, let me hear what you think about those Zoom calls. Let me hear what you think of why you should join them, why it has helped you by joining the membership. And so we will hit on that. Signs are working very well. Listen to the live with Moses. That's awesome, Jonathan. Um, I'm wearing pink too, Jason. So um, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll hit on this story too. So you all know that... I have a guy that is in the group, in the community, that comes to all those lives um, on those Zoom calls, did $400,000, and it's his company's name, Pink Pro Wash. And Pink Pro Wash, well, thank you for the super chat. I don't know how much it is, but thank you. From Tennessee, um, he is an amazing dude, Jeremy Main. And so Jeremy Main was a full-time garbage man. He literally was throwing garbage off of, and into the the thing and he was a garbage man up in Michigan and he he didn't want to be a garbage man he anymore he had been there for 17 years so he's like a lifetime garbage man this isn't somebody that you know whatever so Jeremy started his pressure washing business and he started as a completely different um, business name. And the thing about Jeremy is Jeremy was um, 20 years old when this happened to him. His mom had gotten breast cancer. And she was 40 years old. His mom had passed away with breast cancer at 40. Jeremy was only 20 years old when his mom passed away. And so then he named his business, <laughs> he named his business Pink Pro Wash. And he has done so awesome with it. He is don't helping other people. He's donating to different, you know, he's donating um, to the pink pro wash things. And so he's had, so his mom's cousin uh, messaged him and gave him like, man, you're doing awesome in it. Can I buy a t-shirt? And he sent me that and telling me that story. And I'm like, dude, you ought to sell t-shirts and give all the proceeds to the organizations that you are doing and he's got like two or three organizations that you know are doing pink 
pink or that are doing breast cancer awareness stuff and they're all in his area and he's like i'm gonna do something and then so then we when we was in response to bid we went to response to bid um back in february and jeremy was there also with his girlfriend and jennifer and so he had talked about there was a lady there talking about cleaning for a cause um cleaning for a cause is a um, organization that is for um, just house cleaning, the inside of the house cleaning, and cleaning for a cause. Now, Jeremy actually went and bought washing for a cause. Um, and so he's going to wash for a cause. And right now, his cause that he really loves is, is the breast cancer because it has affected him. Now, it has affected us in our family here recently. Um, it's, so these are some things that is what we why we do what we do and to help people grow their business um, I want to know more about what's in it well I just gave you a bunch of what's in it you can go to king of and then you can see it in there um, what up family like this guy right here is in the membership all the way from South Africa and so it is awesome to see him start and taking action he he originally when he started coming into the membership he's like I'm gonna wait till August wait till August we're like take steps start taking steps start moving yourself to that business and so that is awesome to see people start and start growing what up coach how are you doing Tristan um, Juliet endless knowledge um, hey, Jason, Mike Manning. Hey, Mike, I sent you the, your thing. I haven't seen it come through on your email. So um, hopefully you check your email, maybe check your spam. From It should come from Amazon is where that should come from. So make sure you check that because I did send everybody that won last week or the last day. I, had, I did my word and I made sure that it got out. Um, pressure wash. We clean gutters. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much how people talk when they talk on the phone and, and answer. And you are exactly right about that. Um, I feel like I'm overpriced sometimes, but the customer goes for it and I know I'm doing it right because you are not your customer. You got to remember that. And I see this and I'm going to hit on this here. Of you are not your customer. I will hit on this when I start hammering down on it. Shout out from Arizona. I get my pressure wash this week. Um, Patrick, um, Bet David said, with the coming recession, the best thing you can do is join a community. Don't fight alone. I can believe that because this way you can all work together. And that's what my goal is, work together. Hey, this is what's working. This is not what's working. Um, who do you have um, in your ultimate pressure washing industry band group? Jason, I was in your Raleigh class a while back. Need your help. How to quote two story 3600 square foot roof would i quote it as 1800 square foot or the foot i usually just do it as the 3600 um you should join jason's um join because jason is the most honest mentor out there he really wants to see people succeed and doesn't blow smoke that's not me saying it that's somebody else saying it little little guy little pressure wash and thanks for the super chat all right, I got to get moving here, guys. You guys are already answering it's getting a bunch of questions. I haven't even gotten started, which is awesome. I love it, guys. I love you guys asking questions, and I love answering them. Um, soon I will be getting it. My eight gallon is on the way from Manatee. Awesome. Jason, I printed my yard signs on only one side. Will that be a problem? Not at all. That's actually not a bad deal. Best coach ever. Already at $51,000 in business. Thanks for the for everything that is amazing dude fifty one thousand, and we're already in here that is awesome um that is amazing thank you for the super chat thank you thank you thank you um two thousand dollar wash big ticket all right let's get started here let me get started here and then i'll come back to your all's question i know i'm not down to where you guys are at because you all answering questions but how many in here let me in the comments let me see and when I get to it, I'll, I'll hit on it. But how many of people here struggle on closing jobs? How many people here struggle with dealing with customers? How many people in here, let me ask, then this is another question. How many people in here love sales? Like 
you love going talking to the customer you love going to um, do that or are you on on part B of I hate talking on the phone I hate when this thing rings I don't want it to ring I, I, I want it to ring but I don't want it to ring and when it rings I don't know what to say I don't know what to do and so we're gonna talk about that right so this week um, we, I got a new truck last year, 2021. It's got 50,000 miles because I do a lot of trainings all over the country. And I, I travel quite a bit doing those trainings and stuff. And, and I go to classes myself. I'm not just one to say, hey, go to classes, but I don't do it myself. I go to my classes my, right now myself. I'm actually in a class right now talking about how to take action. So you'll hear me talking more about taking action. And... So my tires had about 50,000 miles on them. And my wife, um, they were kind of a, it's kind of got more of, they're, they're, they're the Wrangler tires, if you know anything about tires, they're the Goodyear Wranglers, and they're very loud. Like, they were starting to hurt my ears. They were already hurting my wife's ears and my kids' ears, but they were starting to hurt my ears. And so I'm like, all right, I gotta go buy new tires. I don't want to, because I know it's gonna cost a lot of money, but I know I might be going on a trip coming up and then this past week, I went down to Nashville, and I, when driving through the buildings and the other cars, I heard a tick, 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 tick as I was driving along, and it sounded, it would go faster with the tires, so I figured it was something in the tires. I couldn't find it originally. I come home, and I look in my tires, and there's a bolt that's about that big around um, it's a big bolt in my tire. And so then my air tire gauge comes on and I'm like, all right, I need new tires. So I love to use local guys. I don't like going to the big chain stores. I don't like to do that. So I called three local guys and I'm going to tell you my experience with these three local guys. And then I'm going to tell you my experience with the bigger guy. And what this comes down to is is the three little guys, and you can put yourself in this here, the three little guys have employees that they haven't talked at all how to sell. They said, hey, can you answer the phone and can you sell stuff? And this is what happens. And so these three companies are, are local. They're right down the street. First off, the first one, they did answer the phone but it wasn't professional. What do you want? That kind of stuff. And he did give me a price. All right. Do when do I need them? Well, you got to come in here by noon and we can try to get them ordered today. And I'm not a hundred percent that we're going to get them um, done. And I'm like, well, I need my, this was on Friday. I'm like, I need my truck on Saturday. Cause I got to go to Louisville. Um, my oldest daughter is playing soccer down there. So I got to go to Louisville and we got to see if we can do that. And I'm like, and he gives me a price. I'm like, that's not, that sounds like a lot, but it is a new truck. It has 18s on it. It was like $1,550, $1,550 for four freaking tires and alignment. And so I'm like, man, that's a lot. But all right, call number two. Number two, what do you got? Um, I, I don't know. Um, I, um, let me get your information and I will call you back. Okay, so I gave him my information and he calls me back about four hours later. Well, i am already took my truck to the, the national chain because they've already given me the quote. They already given me everything I needed and I already did it. So by the time that company gave me a quote, I already had my truck where I wanted it. Because I am like a lot of customers is when I want something, I want it. I don't care what the price is. I want it. I don't want to wait and for you to give me a phone call to say, all right, we come in person and all of that. I want my quest. I want my estimate now. And so these are some things that when we're thinking about this, this is what we need to think about. So I called tire discounters and tire discounters. That dude was on it. He was on it like Donkey Kong. He was like, he said all the right things. And I know the people at Tire Discounter, they get sales training 
all the time. This isn't just something of here's here go sell some tires. No, it they do sales training. They go over scripts. They play back and forth of what do you say when they someone calls. And so these are some things you can do even in the in the networking group of hey, how do you answer your phone? What do you say? Why don't you say that? What do you say? And so when we are doing this stuff, yeah, I hate tire issues, but I guess it happens time to time. That's exactly right, Heath. And so what that does is it got me thinking. I'm like, why does tire discounters he talked to me, he got all my information. He's like, you know what? I know them Goodyear tires. They're they are so loud, you're right. Most people only make it to about thirty thousand. And I was like, Well, I've made it to fifty thousand on these tires. And so he gave me some options. I picked the option and I was there within an hour getting my tires ready to be put on. Now, this is where it did get a little spocky, but they kept good communication with me the whole time. Those other people, they never asked me for my phone number. They never asked me for anything. They never got any of my information. And so they, there's no way that they can even call me back to try to sell me tires because they have already just wrote me off and I'm not even a customer at that point. And so tire discounters, they got my name, they got my phone number, they got all my information, they got my email. And so now I'm in their database, right? I'm in their database. And so the two little guys, I'm not in their database. They don't even know, well, the one guy, he did get my phone number and he did call me back eventually at like noon or actually it was like one or two o'clock in the afternoon. And so these are some things we got to think about. Now, they got the wrong tires for my truck, which threw me to the next day, which threw me to Saturday. Well, I'm like, crap, I need my truck because I got to go to Louisville. I got to leave here at 930 to be at my daughter's soccer game to take her at soccer game. And so I went to soccer game. And what happened is, I so I do have my Jeep still. And so I drove my Jeep down there and I broke down when I got down there. Um, so that sucked. So the old Jeep, we luckily my in-laws came to watch the kid, my granddaughter play, their granddaughter play. And then I drove back home. They drove us back home. And then last night, DJ and I got to take my trailer down there and pick up my Jeep and bring it back. Um, we were driving home. And the next thing we know, the tire's smoking and um, the front right or front left tire is just smoking, the caliper sticking. And I was like, eh, I don't want to over, well, it was already overheated, obviously, because it was smoking. But I do have my daughter in here and I don't want to be in the truck if this wheel falls off. So I would be safer to have us take it home. So what I come out of this was is, how do you talk on the phone? How do you communicate to people? Are you, do you have a script or are you him hauling around and trying to find everything and paper and, and don't have a script and don't sound professional? Because the two places that I called that wasn't um, the Nash Tire Discounters, neither one told me what the name of their business was. Neither one said, hello, this is Blank's Garage. How may I help you? Neither one did that at all. And so I didn't even know, I'm assuming that it is it. You know, the first one or the tire discounters, I said, okay, I know who it is. He told me his name and I said, I need tires. And he walked me right down through there. What tires do you want? What tires? Do you... Actually, he didn't even ask for my tire size. He asked me, what's your vehicle? The other guys were like, well, what's your tire size? Well, luckily, I know this because I'm a mechanic by trade. I already had my tire size all down there. But tire discounter knows that most people don't know their tire size. Most people don't even know what tire is on their vehicle. And so what tire discounters did was they actually, what, what vehicle do you have? And he was going to go down that route. Now, I said... I, here's the tire size, if that will help you out even faster. And he's like, it will. So company A and B over here, they just like, you know, not, not flowing at all, not growing the dude. And here's the other thing, you know, I always say smile when you talk on the phone. When you answer that phone, smile. You know you're smiling. You're taking a deep breath. You're stopping. You're laying that pressure wash gun down. You take a deep breath. 
and you smile and you answer that phone. Hello, Jason Guyman here with, or Jason here with Pressure Wash Help. How may I help you today? They know who I am. They know what, um, they know everything. They, they know the business I'm doing. They know all of that stuff. Where the other two, they're like, hello, hello. Be different, guys. Do things differently. That's what I want you to do. I want you to do things differently. And I want you to get comfortable. Most of the times, the reason why you suck at sales is because you're not comfortable. One, you don't know, you don't know what you're selling. You haven't figured out what you are selling. You haven't figured out that you are selling customer service. That's what you're selling. You're trying to sell pressure washing. And when you're trying to sell pressure washing, that customer don't give two craps about pressure washing. You're trying to sell that you have the best customer service around and you answer your phone and that is what people want. So figure out what services potential customers need. Customer service is what they need. They need communication and customer service. And if you have those two amazingly, Chick-fil-A, they have amazingly customer service. Is their chicken better than Cane's? All those other ones? Who, who in here thinks chicken Chick-fil-A has the best chicken out there? Like they are not there is no other chicken better than chicken fillet. Chick-fil-A. Let me hear what your thoughts on that was. They have the best and most amazing chicken. Or do they have the best, most um, customer service? Which one is it? Do they have the best chicken or do they have the best customer service while you go to eat at Chick-fil-A? Next thing, um, create a strong sales pitch. Sit there and walk through that, you know, have it down as an elevator speech. Have it videotape yourself. Have it do all of it, you know, do it to your friends so that way they you can hear yourself um, what you're doing there uh, when you're do doing that stuff. But the story, moral of this story is, is, you know, don't go out there trying to sell pressure washing. Go out there and try to sell you know, customer service, be the customer, be the king of customer service. And when you're the king of customer service, it'll show up on your Google reviews. Did you think that your customer service will show up on Google reviews? It will absolutely show up on your Google reviews and it will absolutely help you out in the long run for sure. And then one other thing I was going, while we're on tires and, you know, trying to do lead magnets. So I have a friend that lives up in Indianapolis and she posted that she had a hole in her tire. She had a bolt in her tire. She didn't go to tire discounter. She went to discounter tires. Well, they do free um, hole uh, to fix your tires. They'll do free repair. And you might say, well, Jason, that's a $20, $30 fix. Okay, but when they get you in there, that's their lead magnet because when they get you in there, then they're going to give you good customer service and they're going to show you that your tires need to be replaced. And so that's how they get the leads in there. Just something to think about it. If you're doing in-person estimate, is it better to give the customer pricing before you leave their place? I would, if you're going to do it that way, I, I think it is good to have it itemized down on a sheet. So then that way you can sit there and say, here's what we have. And these are the prices. And then you shut up because the next person loses. And so you let them think about what they want and then we can sell it up. And so yes, I do think that if you are going to do, um, if you're gonna do in-person quotes, I do think that it is best to give the price when you are there. All right, I'm gonna go through some questions here if I can find my mouse here. Um, to any of the, you that do windows, do you do interior, exterior, or just exterior? I'm thinking of just doing exterior. Exterior is the best way to do it. Interior becomes a whole nother issue. It's harder to find employees to go into houses that you got to worry about. You got to worry about breaking stuff. You got to worry about them being home. And that is just a pain to do with when we are trying to do that. How do I get jobs right away? Go put out, go be like Moses two or three or two weeks ago and go put out 400 signs and you will get jobs right away. Um, either that or you're going to have to, if you're good, if you have a good Facebook presence, that's a way. Um, but 
my best way to tell you is yard signs. That's the way I've figured out the best. Um, I'm ordered. I I'm older. No excuses there. And I'm going to start a pressure washing and trying to learn what I can. Moving to Massachusetts from New Hampshire, you know. I'm actually reading a really good book, and I'm not giving this away, but I'm going to show this because I'm reading this book. And he talks about ageitis. You know, ageitis is, well, I'm too old. Old itis. I'm too old itis. And that's the worst thing you can do. And let me find it here. I'm not giving anything away, but I just want to read this, show you this book. The Magic of Thinking Big. This is my number one book. This will be not one of my top five books, must read books. Um, e Myth is one, but this is definitely one of the number one book that I'm reading. And again, I'm not giving anything away tonight. I probably should, um, but I, I might, who knows? Um, the magic of thinking big, the magic of thinking big is the number one book that I think that if you're starting a pressure washing business, if you're already in pressure washing business, it's one of my top three to five books. It's probably one of my top three books I would highly recommend. It's not, it talks about mindset and it is amazing about mindset. So it is my number one book that I would highly recommend you to go read it. Just cause you're old don't mean nothing. Um, hustle brother, go talk to everyone. Um, I love PD or PDM. He also has a great book. Your next five moves. Put out 600 flyers and 25 yard signs Saturday. I received four calls Saturday and I'm closing on Sunday, but answering all those calls and landed at four jobs at $3,700 this week. So whoever was asking, how do you close jobs fast? This right here, 600 clip flyers and 25 yard signs. That's how you get the phone to ring. It ain't, it's not sitting at your table and saying, man, you know what? I, I want to get the pressure washing business going. It's taking action. Is it scary to go put out signs? Yes, it is. Is it scary to go put out clip flyers? Yes, it is. Are people going to call you and cuss at you because you're putting out clip flyers? Yes, they are. Are people going to call you and want pressure washing because you threw a clip flyer? Yes, you are. Are people going to call you because you were too scared to go put out clip flyers and you didn't put nothing out? No, people are not. Or maybe you're too scared to call and maybe you're too scared to go put out yard signs because you're just too scared to go put them out and somebody might see you and, you know, we're going down that road of, hey, somebody might see me. And so... Go do it. You have to take action. You have to put that first step. You have to take that first step. If you're not willing to take the first step, it'll never happen. And then when we, and then once we take that first step, guess what happens? We start getting momentum. And when we get momentum, the next step comes easier and easier. But if we don't take action, we sit there and be like, man, I want to go out there, but man, this couch, I'm all lean back in my couch. I got a whole garage full of these yard signs here, but I'm afraid to go put them out, right? We have to go take action. We have to go do it and we have to make things happen. And when you do, look, $3,700 to do this week, all by him just taking action. Was he scared? I don't know. Maybe I bet he, it wasn't like big confidence, but you just have to go take action. How much should anybody make their first year in pressure washing? Well, if you do nothing, you'll make nothing. If you take action and you hammer down, you can make $100,000 your first year. I mean, Moses' first year this was his first May and did $30,000 in May. $30,000 in May. Now, did he sit on his butt and saying, I want my business. I want to figure out these Facebook ads, I'm going to pay somebody to do Facebook ads and it's just going to blow me all this money. No, he didn't do that. Hey, I'm going to go do AdWords and it's just going to blow me all this money. I ain't got a website or nothing else, but I'm going to do these AdWords and I'm willing to spend money and it's just going to blow me up. No, what did he do? He went out and put 500 signs out and then he's going to order 800 more. And he went, he putting out 200 every two weeks. That's a lot of freaking signs. Who in here thinks 200 yard signs every two weeks is a lot of signs? Put Let me hear say, that's me. I think that's a lot, right? It is a lot. But you know what? 
He did $30,000 by doing that. He didn't do $30,000 by sitting on his butt saying, man, I need to order yard signs. Do I uh, put house washing or power washing? Get on the cow keyboard here. We're going to get on the keyboard here and we're going to, do I do this or do I do that and ask everybody else? No, he took action. He did house washing. Was that the best one? Maybe. I would have done pressure washing. But you know what? He did house washing and he did $30,000. That's what I want you to do. I want you to take action. I want you to go out there and take action. Maybe it is join kingofpressurewash.com. Maybe that's your first step of action so I can get into your tail and make you do a little bit more. You know, I see so many people, they'll sit there and they can't figure out their business name and they can't figure out their logo. And three months later, they're still haven't started nothing. They still haven't done nothing. They still haven't put out no signs. They still haven't done no Facebook lives. They still haven't done anything because they've sat there and focused on a logo or a pressure washing name instead of focusing on what they need to focus on is what is my goal? My goal is $100,000. All right, if I want to do $100,000, let's reverse engineer that. And I got 10 months to make it. So I got to do it in 10 months. So I got I got to make 10,000 in 10 months, okay? So that's uh, $10,000. So I need to do $2,500 a week. How do I do $2,500 a week? Man, how do I do $2,500 a week? Well, let's look here. He put out 25 signs and received and 600 clip flyers, and he got $3,700 a week. Well, guess what? This boy's already on, on over $10,000, right? Because he's only got to do $2,500 and to make $10,000 a month. And so when we start looking at this and we start focusing on this, guess what? We don't focus on what logo is going to make us any money. Because how many people in here think that a logo is going to make us money? Anybody in here says a logo is going to make you money. I would like to hear that. That would be really interesting. Popeye's chicken is better. Um, I've done commercial work, um, then residential work. How do I get away from commercial work? I'd rather hit up the residential. It's much less stressful. Well, go do yard signs and go do uh, um, that stuff. Facebook ads or Google ads. Um, congrats. I love sales. I love sales now. Hated it as a younger guy. Um, not great at it. People person. I love the sell. Sell the sizzle, not the steak. Exactly. We're not selling the steak. We're selling the sizzle. We're not selling the pressure washing. We're selling the commercial or the, the, uh, um, commute. I can't even talk. You guys got me tongue twisted. When my phone rings, it's coming money. That's right. It's a good way to think about it. I'd much rather talk in person. Some people like talking in person. Some people don't. Self-employed forced me to do it and get used to it. My secret to closing is following up. Sell people on what you and what you can do for them. They have a problem and you solve it. If you don't hear from someone on a ticket, call them. Email them, phone blast them, text them, email them. We don't just stop with one done, one and done. And that is so true. Zig Ziglar. Haha, ha, I'm late. I almost forgot. Can't forget. First approach, I'm scared as you know what. It is. I know. Um, I'm not the best on the phone. I'm going to hire Jill's office full time so they can fast as I can. And that's a good point. If you use Jill's office and you use Responsibid, they can type everything in and it's just all automation. And that's a whole lot of systems that you can use to make it a lot better. If you go to kingofpressurewash.com and go to the resource page, I have Jill's office on there and I have Responsibid. Both of them work great. Wranglers suck. 35,000 miles on my Ram and very noisy. They are super noisy. Um, they, <laughs> I mean, they are loud. Um, Jason, <coughs> when does house washing slow down? What month? Well, it will slow down in right now, July and August. It will be slow month. I'm hot in here. I didn't turn my air conditioner on. I didn't turn it on. Um, it'll slow down in July and August, and then it'll pick up in September, and then 
it'll, it'll depend on where you live at. October can be decent. October can suck. November, it, like I said, if you're in the south, if you're in where it's warm, September, October, November can actually be good months because everybody's getting their house ready for the holidays. If you're up here in Kentucky and north, those months suck. So that's just something to think about. Last, um, I mentioned last week sometime that my partner and I got a $9,700 ticket last week. It turned into a $11,700. Um, that was our first job. It's out there. You just got to go do it. Um, what part of mass are you in? Um, what kind of price would you guys have on a 2,000 square foot ranch? I'll be on one side, I'd have a $300 minimum. That's what I would have, $300. $300 minimum would be what I would cost to go out there. We got Al in the house. Talked to him last week. Actually, he messaged me a week or so ago. He likes to stir a lot of feathers. I love stirring a lot of feathers. And so we poke at each other. And so it works out well. Um, Jeep breaking down, what? No way. Yeah, the tire was ready to lock up. Um, not only are you in their database, you are now advertising for them to 84 people. Good service gets referrals. Actually, it's 98 right now. It was over 100. But you are absolutely right. When people do good work and when they do good things, people get talked about. And that's what is amazing. Because, um, you know, somebody put Popeye's chicken is better than, um, than um, Chick-fil-A. But I about guarantee you that Chick-fil-A is making more than Popeye's is. Just because the chicken's better doesn't mean that um, their customer service is better. And your customer service and how they run a business is better. And so that's very important. Let me know next time you need tires. I got a major hookup on tire trucks, trailers, bro. If you need anything, I got them. I paid 800 for a set of 1835 ATs. My truck is not worth 100000 but it's also my mobile office. I want to hit on that real quick. Um, last week, I went to Nashville. You knew that. I went to BBB. And I, had, I heard an idea for some of you guys that are mobile offices. And some of you go to gas stations. And you know the gas stations that are real busy that you go there and you get a referral every time you go there. Somebody's like, hey, do you got a business card? Or they're taking a picture of your truck or whatever. Go park your truck there and do, if you got mobile, if you got an office work to do, if you need to do quotes and estimates, go to those gas stations and park your truck right where the front door is so people can see you. And yes, you're sitting in there and you're doing your quotes, but you're making, you can make a lot of money off of doing that. It's just a thought and an idea. I got brand new. Um, I'm going to scroll down here. What, uh, Jason, can you give an example of a sales pitch on a house wash driveway clean and maybe an upsell on a roof clean? Yeah. So let's talk about that. So first off, um, when we answer the phone, hello, I'm Jason. How may I help you? Right. And so they're going to say, I'm whatever. Um, do you do pressure washing? And you're going to say yes. And you're going to say, tell me a little bit about your project. And this is a good starter to say, tell me a little bit about your project. If you are on your phone and you, or if you're working and you need to stop because they can tell you about their project while you are getting your paper out or you're getting your phone out so you can start typing, right? So when you do that, that's what's going to happen. And then they're going to talk and they're going to give you their pain points. They're going to tell you what's wrong. They're going to tell you everything. And so once they get done with that, you're going to say, yes, I can absolutely help you with that, right? Because we're going to be like, yes, I can absolutely help you with whatever you got dirty. Yes, I can absolutely help you with your house wash. Um, so, ma'am, we can absolutely help you with your house wash. Um, I just need some information so we can get the, the correct information. Can you um, please give me your name again? And then you're going to write your name down. All right. And so the way we quote our jobs is, is we actually look up your address. And when we look up your address, we'll be able to tell how big your house is. And we will be able to give you an accurate quote for your house wash. Awesome. Then we can go through and get all the information, right? We're not going to say, 
hey, name, address, email, phone number, underwear size, right? We're not, we are not, we are not doing that. We are breaking each step down and we're working our steps through there. Then what we're going to do when we're on the phone, we're going to say, all right, so the way we do this, and this will be under the email, um, when we email you, there will be a, a quote there. Um, we got a couple of different options for you. And through these options, you'll be able to pick what's best for you in your house, right? And so that is why we do this. And then if you are going to go in person or if you are going to um, in the phone call, you know, this is where we're going to be the spiel. Hey, just to let you know, we are a family business that is trying to grow this pressure washing business. And our goal is to hope that you are so happy at the end of this service that you will want to give us a five-star review, right? We're going to set that right in the beginning. We're going to set that before we even get there. Our goal as this business is to make sure that you are so happy that you will give us a five-star review or you could even be, or your money back. Or if you're, you know, we, we will guarantee a hundred percent satisfaction right we're gonna we're gonna make it smooth and i actually have this rundown in the membership i have it's word by it's word for word in the membership you can print it off and you can start putting your information in there and you can do this stuff and it is not rocket science and so with that these are some things you can do for that then my response to bid is going to sell the packages because then I can go in there and I can, you know, here's your house wash. Here's your house wash and exterior window cleaning. Here's your house wash, exterior window cleaning and driveway package. Because right, we always put everything in packages. Most people pick the middle package. So that's why we do packages. Um, chicken's okay. Zaxby is where it's at. Um, fan customer service is fantastic. Um, they are okay. Customer service is better. Yes. Um, customer service. You all are saying Chick-fil-A's customer service is bomb diggity. Jason, when does pressure washing? I already answered that one up there. Um, Christmas light training in Seattle. Yes. Let's talk about that. Um, I will be in Seattle on um, if you want to go check it out, you can go to pressurewashhelp.com slash dates, and it will take you to the page for the in-person training. And I am doing pressure washing training, and I'm doing a Christmas light training. Both of these trainings are hands-on. Um, I have John that is in um, up there right now. He's going to help me, and he's going to provide a pressure washing trailer. And so that we, I, and he's got a house for me to clean. So that way, this is a hands-on. This isn't, hey, let's go watch Jason clean. This is, hey, Jason does it in PowerPoint and make sure you got all the safety stuff. And then Jason goes out and shows you. And then Jason gives you a pressure washing gun. And yes, I know it can be scary for some people. Jason gives you a pressure washing gun. And then you get to pressure wash. So if you are looking for in-person training in there in Seattle area, out west, make sure you check out pressurewashup.com slash dates. Christmas site training. So the Christmas site training, I'll be doing that. It's hands-on. Um, it's not, I mean, we'll be doing the lights and the, how everything works. We'll be putting lights on trees. We'll be doing all of that stuff too. And so that is what we'll be doing for Christmas lights. Um, so, um, I try to let you do a little bit of the ladder stuff. I don't like too many people on a ladder. It scares me. Somebody fall, somebody nervous up there. And I don't like doing too much of that, but we will put some lights up on a house. So if you want to check it out, Go check out pressurewashhelp.com slash dates, and we will be in Seattle. It's the end of Ju June, 1st of July. It's June 30th, 1st and 2nd. You can either do Christmas lights or you can do pressure washing. And then the middle day is the best day is marketing. And that's a full day of marketing, 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 because what grows our business? Marketing. So, yes, that's a great question. Um, which is better, four tip surface cleaner, two four gallon, or four two gallons? The four tip is better if you got an eight gallon. Um, my area is year round. 
Never slows down in Florida. It does slow down in July, June and July sometimes, and even January. Um, what is the nearest um, Xmas light training in Georgia, and what is the cost? Um, this this class here is going to probably be the cheapest. It normally goes up as the year comes on um, because we give a little bit extra stuff. Um, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we do. But it will be prob there will be a class in September and October in Raleigh. Then will be the closest to um, there, and that will be with Donovan down there. Um, are you going to do the Christmas light? Yes, I need to hit on that. I had a customer mention that I need a USD or O dot number on my truck. What do you know about this? This is something he's he's something I need. He said I can get fined without it. Well, it depends. Um, if you're pulling a truck and trailer that is over ten thousand pounds, yes, you need a DOT number. If you have a truck with a pressure washer. If you have a truck that is under 10,000 pounds, you do not need a DOT number if you're not pulling a trailer. If you're pulling a trailer, technically, yes, you need a DOT. Now, you can play dumb, and that's usually what most people do, and they get away with it. The DOT numbers are a pain in the butt. you got to do it every year, and it's a pain in the tail. Um, anything over 10,000 pounds has to have a DOT number, supposed to. And you're supposed to have a physical at that point, too, if you're over 10,000 pounds. You have to have a DOT physical if you're over 10,000 pounds. And if you're over 26,001 pounds, then you got to have a Class A license if you have a truck and trailer that is over that. But most times, most people, I, I mean... I, I know some people that got hit. It just depends. Good day, sir. I'm getting ready to have a trailer system built. What do you recommend? Five or eight? Eight. Eight all day long. Um, this is my first live. I normally miss it. Glad I made it. Awesome. I'm glad you made it, too. Um, a ATDP. Answer the damn phone, even on Sunday. It makes you money, guys. It will make you money if you answer the phone. Make your money all day long. Um, how you all doing pressure washing family? And here's the other thing. So he put there. So this is why I kept all my truck under 10,000 pounds. You can get F-250s that are under 10,000 pounds. And I didn't pull trailers because of this right here. Because getting the DOT numbers are a pain. So... That's how, why I had three trucks that actually I had four trucks that were all under 10,000 pounds. And one was probably over 10,000 pounds, but there was no GVW on that truck anywhere. You couldn't find a GVW on it. So I just took the chance and hoped for the best. And I never got caught. Any walking clinic can do it normally. Yes. I put out 500 clip flyers and got three jobs. One homeowner complained about it. Guess what I did next? I put out a thousand more. Awesome. That's what you do. Go take action. I just want you doing something. I want you to do something. If you do, if you do windows, do you have to pull the screens? No, we, we actually make sure that they know that if we're going to do exterior window, they have to take the screens out from the inside because we can't do it from the outside. I'm mainly doing soft wash in Minnesota. When does homeowners stop wanting the business well you are in the winter time it's going to get there a lot early so you'll be lucky to get in september because it's cold up there best thing i ever did was just start i did it i did it to do it backwards i did buy everything first but that so far hasn't been a problem good jason you're a little intense tonight i love the passion and energy you have I just want you all to be successful. I want you to go out there and do amazing things. I want you to be able to change. I want you to be like Jeremy. I want you to go out there and change your community because I can't change your community. You are the only one that can change your community. You are the only person that can do amazing things to change your family's tree. You can do things that will help you change what you do for your family. You can go change so you can be at your kids' ball games. You can change so that you can um, help guys get off drugs. You can do it to help 
your local whatever. And yes, you can do that. And that's why I do get passionate about it. That's why I love what I do because I love helping you do things so that you can change your family freedom, your family time, your family financials. And then when you change that, then you can go help your community and help other people change things. And I can't do it all, but if I help you, then you can go out there and do amazing things. And that's why I come on here every Sunday and every Thursday night at 9 o'clock so that I can help you do amazing things. You know, do I do I try to push my classes? Do I try to – I got to make a living myself. $1,500 worth of tires wasn't cheap. But on the other hand, I see people making $100,000. I see people making $100,000 months. I, and that literally didn't make that in two years. I got the I got the text that shows me that it was a check that they cashed for a hundred and like a hundred thirty thousand dollars. They did one check, hundred thirty thousand dollars. They said me and my husband didn't make this for two years. We didn't even make that in two years, and they made it in one check. That's what I love to help people change their family tree. Now they can go help other people and they can give those people jobs and careers, not just jobs because who wants a job, but they can go give them careers. And you might say, Jason, how can you have a career running a pressure washing business? Because it's a business. And when you run a business and not a job, you can do amazing things. If you want a pressure washing job and make, you know, $50 an hour, you might as well go watch them other guys that are trying to sell their their $1,000, $300 course, their $1,000 course. You might as well go watch them because I'm not teaching you how to do a job. I'm going to teach you how to run a business. And when we run a business, that's what I teach you. Why do we, I had somebody say, Jason, why do you try to teach people to do high pricing right out of the get-go? Why don't you teach them to start low? Because if I taught you how to start low, you would never raise your prices. You would be comfortable with it. But if I can make you uncomfortable and then you start selling those $300 jobs, those $500 jobs, those $3,000 jobs, then you're like, man, this is amazing. This is awesome. And it works. And yes, it does work. Now, will you get lots of no's? Yes. Will you get lots of no's because you don't know how to sell? Yes. Will you'll be like the two tire shops that I called because they don't know how to sell. But when you know how to sell, you can grow your business. You can do amazing things. And you are awesome. Did you know you're awesome? You can do amazing things. You're awesome. You're awesome. I have a super simple logo and it works just fine. What should a minimum yard sign size be? 18 by 24 is the ones I like. You can go to, I love my bunny bushes. My money bushes are my money bushes. Money bushes are amazing. Moneybushes.com. Okay, put pressure washing and big phone number. That's all you need on it. Nothing else. Okay, I have to get that on that then. I had no idea. I've been killing the yard signs group lately, yard sale group lately on Facebook. I've made thousands of those in those groups. It hit or miss, but lately it's hitting hard. Awesome. Preach it. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> um, I got pulled over on a federal highway and a state trooper told me when you cross certain states, you have to have different permits. It can be. Yes. Um, I don't think, I don't know everything just learning it as well as regulation numbers uh i tow campers and boats and that's why i have a dot number awesome jason i highly recommend curtis jackson's 50 cents book hustler harder smarter the audio is on youtube and it's a really good book awesome Chick-fil-A is better than bull. <laughs> Jason dropping the knowledge. Who's hosting Seattle? John, I, I don't know. I have to look over his last name. John is who I got it as of right now. Um, have you ever quoted a job because you couldn't see the property on Google? Yes, I've went in person in. 
Definitely learning curve. Jason, what do you recommend during during the slow months? Marketing. Marketing, marketing, marketing. That's what I recommend doing in there. Flipping rocks. Flipping as many rocks as you can. That's what we do in the slow months. Um, great book. All right. We received $1,400 fine for six, 14 uh, sites. I don't even know how to fight this. Yeah. Well, I know one way. You don't put your business, you do a burner phone number. That's how I know some people burn. I don't recommend it, but anyone use vinegar on hard or exciting? I had a client that refused to say, I wouldn't be putting vinegar on it. Worked out well, for very price. All right, awesome. Um, again, go check out kingofpressurewash.com. You can there in my membership. Um, tomorrow night is Monday. We do Marketing Monday. We're talking about LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great way to grow business and get um, commercial work. If you're not getting any commercial work, LinkedIn is definitely a way that you can do that. So go check that out. Um, join the membership and you'll get to be in there tomorrow night. Um, actually, I'll put this link up there. I haven't put this one up there in a while. Um, if you go to pressurewashhelp.com slash free, should be 30 days free. If I can find it, 30 days free. So that'll give you four in-person stuff and that'll give you um, two um, Zoom calls also. So that's actually six Zoom calls that you get to have with me by going to pressurewashhelp.com slash free. I don't know. Oh, right there it is. Um, pressurewashhelp.com slash free. Um, and then that way you can do that. We need to grow our commercial work. I agree. Um, thinking of adding concrete ceiling, will we schedule one? Thinking tried it, not sure. Awesome. So go check that out. Um, pressurewashhelp.com slash free. Um, and sign up for this soon here. I mean, I want to, I am having this class up there. If you've done pressure washing or Christmas lights, there's plenty of money up in Seattle and that Oregon area. You can make lots of money up there. So go check that out. And I'll, and other than that, I'm going to get off here and I'll see you tomorrow night. Take it easy.